Good morning. Good morning, Team Hebegun. We've been back for a couple of days. This was our, I want to say, our most successful trip yet. You hate to compare. It's like comparing your children. I think this trip we got uh, our most and best uh, novel Hebegon finds, even topping our entrance and exploration of the colossal solar calendar last November, which was never done before, never publicly. We made, <laughs> in our small way, world history. We found fresh footprints in the snow, made within the last 12 hours before we found them. My wife found them. Uh, then, I took several crapshoot extreme zoom photos of a suspicious looking dark bit without tripod, using wife's body as bipod, resting camera on her head. Um, challenging conditions, guys, with a poor photographer. I am not a photographer. Nevertheless, I think I have. Now close your eyes because I can't show you the photos, but close your eyes and imagine this. I think I have a large cave invisible from any known trail. It's lucky we, we go off trail. And it will be invisible most of the year, all of summer and all of winter when these roads are closed. You can't even get into the mountain. Only in the early spring and late autumn when the roads are still open and the leaves are off the trees. Only then could anybody see this thing. It's lucky that we also press the seasonal boundaries. And then no casual hiker is ever going to see it. You have to be searching for it. And you have to be in the general area with a reason, a reason to be there off trail. And even then, you need the very finest camera equipment with zoom, even in the hands of a, a bad photographer. When we go up there again, uh, the end of April, this spot is going to be invisible. It'll be totally concealed. The next time to see it will be late autumn. So I believe I have a large cave and at least three Hebegon sitting outside the cave. Over the sequence of photos, these three figures all duck down. I think I have a huge rectangular papa, a more roundish mama. Both of these show more discipline. Papa only lowers his head. His shoulders stay about the same, but his, his head goes down. Mama squats a bit. I think she's squatting at the hips, and she turns one shoulder toward Papa. Maybe for comfort, maybe for guidance, maybe for reassurance, maybe for direction. Behind them and behind a rock, Junior, undisciplined Junior, nervous Junior, he ducks almost completely behind his rock. He goes from head and shoulders above to only forehead above. 
Again, my photo quality is bad. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. Of course, I have no idea at the time what I'm taking pictures of. I don't know its importance. It's only a dark thing far, far, far away. I'm not a photographer. I, I should have had my tripod. I know that, but I expected. And I did have to carry our youngest over snow and mud. Carry the halfling, and I did, so I packed light. Um, this is a call to anyone who could help me. I want to highlight the footprints in the snow and bring them out um, with maximum clarity. And I, these extreme zoom shots uh, ideally, I would like to size and orient them all the same and then flip through them. Flip through them, showing the figures ducking down. But the zooms are different. The level of the camera, the horizons are different. You know, it's cold. We're tired, my hands shake, and my wife's head is not flat on top. If anyone can help me, I will give you the raw data to work with. You must please promise not to leak them. I do not want to reveal this location on Mount Heba. Somewhere on Mount Heba should be enough for the general public. Now, if no one can help me, I will do it, but it will take me longer, and the finished quality will be of low, lower quality. It will be amateurish. It's not out of, at least it's not only out of laziness, I'm asking, but for hope of a, a better product and faster made presentable to everybody. The last footprints found and made public were November of 1972. I was two years old. I think I found a partial print last year on Bingo Akasaka, but it wasn't, it was partial. It was a slip on a hillside. You guys couldn't all see it. These prints are clear. They match other documented photographed footprints. And they match the cast on display in the Hiroshima Police Shobara City Headquarters. It's clear. Skeptical, stubbornly skeptical wife clerk found them. And she's not a skeptic anymore. She now knows that the Hebagon are still with us. Medical doctor, hematologist clerk. Yeah, he's not a podiatrist, but he's a doctor. And he's up to date in Hebagonology qualifications. He believes they are uh, fresh Hebagon footprints. And, amazing to say, ridiculous to say, but I may have found the Hebagon home. Again, if anyone can help me improve on the raw photos, please volunteer. If not, I will do my slow and uh, crappy best. We also made friends with the monk. He and I are now Facebook friends. And we found Hebagon structures behind his temple. Uh, as expected. We also found a huge megalithic tomb mound unopened called the Tomishi. We'll get to that. But fresh footprints on Mount Heba, unequivocal Hebagon footprints, and a cave 
with black figures in front of it who duck down when I take photos of them. Those are your lead stories. I'll bring you more as soon as I can, sooner and better with your help. Thank you, everybody, for your patience, and thank you again, Team Hibigon, for your help always, in all forms. Um, if anyone is a jerk and tries to rush me or poke me or call me a liar, you'll only make me mad and it'll go slower, so please don't do that. These are very important discoveries. They're very precious to me. Uh, I want to present them the best way, not necessarily the fastest way. And it, it has to be the most ethical way. We have to keep the Hebegons' privacy and safety and not be jerks to them. So let's festina lente and make haste slowly. I love that saying, make haste slowly and wisely. Okay, thank you. I love you.